Well, good morning, saints. We are here. The fourth Sunday in Advent, the morning of Christmas Eve, this time that we've been waiting for, that we've been longing for, that we have been expecting, is finally here. And we're so glad, I'm so glad, that we can be together to celebrate this service today. Thanks to all of you that might be out on the patio. And of course, those of you that are watching via the live stream, we are thankful for you and for your faithfulness in attending worship with us on this fourth Sunday in Advent. There are a few things going on that we want to make sure that we highlight. First, it has been an absolutely wonderful Advent season. The Christmas worship festival that was offered by the choir, the caroling that happened last Sunday. We've, we have received so many notes, so many uh, emails from folks who are so thankful for how our members went out and, and caroled at their homes. The Wednesday night Advent class that, that finished with this great climactic bang because my wife taught the class. It was a great time together. Thanks for that, Becky. A big thanks to all of you who worked so hard to make Advent so meaningful. We're just so thankful for you and for your service to God and to this congregation. Tonight, we'll be offering two different worship services, two different experiences, two different sermons even. At 4 o'clock will be our family service. It's a little less formal, a little more motion. We'll have an expanded children's time. And then at 7, <clears throat> we'll be uh, offering communion. And both of our services finish with our beautiful candle lighting experience. So we hope that you'll come to one of those. I know several folks who come to both of them. We encourage you to come as, as your family allows you to come. This morning... And this evening, we'll be receiving our Christmas joy gift offering. This offering is one of the two denominational offerings that we participate in. Monies raised go to supplement inadequate pensions for retired clergy and missionaries, as well as supporting the 63 colleges and the two high schools that are supported by our denomination. This is an important, important offering. I'm, I'm particularly mindful of missionaries who have labored so faithfully and oftentimes in such difficult circumstances overseas, being compensated as appropriate for their location. But since our pensions are, are based on, on the monies that we've made, when they retire and come back to the United States, it is just a small fraction of what they need to, to live with any kind of, of integrity, any kind of joy in their retirement time. So this Christmas Joy Gift offering helps supplement those kinds of salaries for people who have, who have really labored well and long uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So again, this morning and this evening, and there are envelopes, I believe, in your, uh, in your orders of worship for that purpose. <clears throat> This morning is our traditional service of Lessons and Carols. You know, Lessons and Carols is really a relatively young service. It was developed in the early 1900s over at, uh, at England at King's College, Cambridge. They wanted a service that was kind of equivalent to the Lenten service of Tenebrae, where lights happened, but they got put out as we moved to the death and then ultimately the resurrection of Jesus. Here in the Sermons of Lessons and Carols, we build up in anticipation of birth. And so we'll be looking at all of salvation history through the reading of various scripture passages offered by our wonderful youth. And those readings will alternate with an opportunity for us to sing Christmas carols. And we will only be standing for the first carol and the last carol, one of the things that we that we discovered when we did this the first time seven or eight years ago is that we had you on pogo sticks up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. so we're going to save your legs uh, again we will rise just for the first carol and just for the final carol i want to invite you now please to join with me in prayer god of manger and star let us enter your story once again and find ourselves kneeling with the shepherds, singing with the angels, 
and worshiping with the Magi. Touch our hearts with the wonder of birth and the depths of your love. Speak to us in word and song and lift us to the realms of your glory. Amen. This Advent season, we have lit the first three weeks candles, first three candles of hope, peace, and joy. And this morning, this fourth Sunday of Advent, I'd now like to invite the Moorhead family to come and join me here in the chancel as we light our final candle. Good morning. Before we begin, uh, I just want to say, hi, Mom. We all love you. Wish you a very Merry Christmas. This Advent season, we watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We have lit the first candle of Advent in hope. We have lit the second candle of Advent for peace. We have lit the third candle of joy. This morning, we light this final Advent candle with love. Out of love for the people of God, the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah, as found in the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 14. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Let us pray. God of hope, Prince of peace, Jubilee judge, and Lord of love, your goodness is beyond our wildest imaginings. You give us more than we can think to ask, coming to us with impossible possibility in the union of flesh and the spirit. Teach us to love this world and all people as you love us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. Amen. Thank you. The beauty of the live stream, giving a shout out to mom. How great is that? <laughs> and now let's rise and sing together our first carol.
Our first lesson for today is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Here ends our first reading for today. Our second lesson for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, and then verses 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there should be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends our second reading for today.
For our third lesson for today is the fifth chapter of Micah, verses 2 through 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of, Eph of Ephrathah, who are one of our little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel and shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Here ends our third reading for today. Our fourth lesson for today is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends our fourth reading for today.
Our fifth lesson for today is from the first chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verses 18 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But, when, but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Here ends our fifth reading for today. Our sixth lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all of the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends our sixth lesson for today.
Our seventh lesson continues the story from Luke, reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Here ends our seventh lesson for today. On this fourth Sunday of, of Advent, as the beauty and wonder of Christmas draws near, as we celebrate the hope, peace, love, and joy that becomes available to us in the birth of the Christ child, as we think about those faithful servants who have retired and we now support with our Christmas gift, to the Christmas joy offering, we respond with a spirit of generosity and thankfulness with our gifts, our tithes, and our completed pledge promises for 2024. So I invite you to leave those offerings and especially your completed pledge commitments in the baskets by the door as you leave this morning. Please join me now in prayer. Angels sang creation's story. And now in prayer we proclaim the Messiah's birth. O God of the manger, your word has been with us since the beginning of time. A gift from eternity to eternity. Today we celebrate that word in human form as a babe lying in a manger. The gift we have been given is the one that also asks us to care for others. And so this morning we thank you for members of this community who have shown their care for others by offering their pledged offerings for the upcoming year. We thank you for all those in this community who give to the ministries of this church. Give us all your Holy Spirit that we will use the time the talents, 
and the treasure entrusted to us as a way of offering our thanks for the gift of Christ. Bless the offerings we bring this Christmas Eve day that they will be used for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We sing joyous Noel, Merry Christmas. And now let us pray our joyous Noel to God. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we pause during this Advent season 
to give you thanks. We thank you for the beautiful stories surrounding your birth faithfully told in this service of lessons and carols. We thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness and steadfast love that has come to dwell among us in Jesus Christ. For nothing is impossible with you. By the power of your spirit, you sent the child of Mary to be the redeemer of the world. We thank you for the surprise experience of Mary and her willing spirit, which said, let it be with me according to your word. We thank you for the promise of your reign, which is forever and ever. And so we come before you in prayer, seeking your purpose for the world. We pray for all those without adequate housing and pray that you will help them find refuge and safety. We pray for leaders of nations, give them wisdom to seek your will. We pray for children and for youth, thanking you for the youth at this church whose leadership in worship shapes their faith and brings us inspiration and hope. We pray for those facing all forms of surgery, bring them through to a time of healing quickly, guide the hands of their surgeons, give them and the nurses who care for them wisdom, patience, and strength. Be with all who are ill, especially during this Christmas season of joy. May they know the healing touch of the Holy Spirit. And we pray, O oh Lord, especially for those who have lost loved ones as they process their grief while the world around them celebrates the joys of the season. In their grief, may they know, deeply know, the consolation of your love. May all who gather together this Christmas Eve day feel your love and your joy that pulses through all things as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The eighth lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written, been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you, have find him, when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. 
when they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that had been seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends our eighth lesson for today. Our final lesson is from John's Gospel, a reading that is known as the prologue, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends our final reading for today. Let's rise for our concluding carol. Thank you.
The night will be still, the stars shining bright. Holiness will be all around. Treasure the stillness. Drink in the wonder. As you move through this day and then lie down and sleep tonight, may the peace of God enfold you. And may you awake with great joy, for our Savior indeed will have come. All is well. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you.